So you have organized your code according to the clean architecture, all entities and obvious business logic went to the center of the application, and all I.O. has been pushed to the outermost circles. But how do you decide about the remaining, not so obviously classifiable code? Like this one. It takes a string as input, which seems to be an XML document, parses it, extracts some data and creates an object called job. Before we can decide which kind of code this is, we have to put it into some context. This class is part of the test failure analyzer we talked about already in other videos. The test failure analyzer analyzes test failures from our CI CD pipeline, stored in a test results database, and then creates defects for our defect tracking system. In our environment, we have multiple CI CD pipelines, and before the actual failures can be processed, certain preparation has to be done, like uploading the test failures into the test results database. In order to orchestrate the different CI CD pipelines and these preconditions, we have introduced a state machine in Test Failure Analyzer and the concept of a job, which represents the different states of the processing of the results of one CI CD pipeline execution. This state machine gets triggered by the creation of a so called job file once the execution of one CI CD pipeline has finished. The responsibility of the job request parser task is to take the content of such a job file, to parse it, and to create a job object out of it. The job class is the entity which models the existence of some CI CD pipeline results and the states of the processing of these results. So, how do we decide which layer, which circle this code should go? These are the basic layers, circles, of the clean architecture. There can be more circles, especially in bigger projects, but these four represent the basic structure of any project following the clean architecture. For any code to decide which circle it belongs to, we can follow a simple checklist. All business logic, any kind of decision making, should be in the use cases circle or the entity circle. Business logic which is central to the entire project or even the whole enterprise, like the domain model, should be in the entity circle. Code, which creates painful dependencies, like dependencies to external services or any kind of I.O., so dependencies which are not under the control of the project and or make testing more difficult, such code should be in the outermost circle. And finally, code which builds the bridge between the business logic and the code with painful dependencies will be in the adapter circle. Looking at our code again, we can easily conclude that it does not contain much logic or decision making. We can see a few if statements, but those are rather about basic input data validation than about business logic. Validation of business rules, like whether a job with the same build number already exists in the system, would be business logic and that seems to be somewhere else, probably in one of the use case interactors. If the job request parser task would read from the file system directly, then we would consider this as a painful dependency to an external service, the file system. And as we don't want to have such dependencies in our business logic, and also not in the adapters layer, we would push this class to the outermost circle, the I.O. layer. As the original implementation does not have such dependencies and we already concluded that it does not contain business logic, we could consider it as part of the adapters layer. And if we now analyze what exactly the class is doing, Doing, we realize it simply does data conversion. It takes less structured data from outside, a string which contains some XML document, and converts it into more structured data, a job object, for further processing by the business logic. In clean architecture, this is exactly the job of an adapter, specifically an adapter often called controller. But if we look even more closely, we realize there is one thing which is not just data conversion. And this is line 22. Here the job request parser task decides what should be the initial state of a job and it also decides when this state is achieved. This is decision making. Such code should be in the use cases layer or the entities layer. We could simply decide to remove this line here and move the decision into an appropriate use case interactor. But this would mean we would create here a job without any state. Do we want this to be a valid state of our job entity? A better design would be to not create a job entity directly in this controller, the job request parser task, but to create a specific data transfer object or DTO to transfer the converted data to an appropriate use case interactor. This use case interactor then creates the job entity and decides which initial state it should have and when this state would be achieved, for example, once the job entity is created or once it is saved in some storage or once the job file is deleted. This design also matches very well the control flow diagram from clean architecture, where the controller, our job request parser task, receives a request from outside, the input string, parses it and creates a request model, a job request DTO, and finally passes it to the use case interactor. That's it for this video. Next time you are not sure to which layer a certain code should go, ask yourself these questions. 
Does the code contain business logic and decision making only? Put it into the use cases layer. Should the code be part of the domain model? Put it into the entities layer. Does the code contain painful dependencies? Put it into the I.O. layer. Does the code just data conversion? Put it into the adapters layer. And if the code is a mix of two or three layers, then refactor the code towards separation of concerns and go through the questions afterwards again. Do you know what actually the essence of the clean architecture is and how to apply it to an existing code base? Watch this video next.